All right, so I'm going to be showing you guys how to use an application called S2B Emulator. Uh, for those who don't know what this is, it's, a, it's an application that emulates uh, IPTV boxes, uh, some receivers out there, a MAG 250, uh, which is a very common one, the newer version, which is a 254, uh, the AV uh, OV, I think it's called. It's another receiver, and each one of these boxes range anywhere from $60 from the lower, uh, from the older ones to about 110 for the newer ones. Uh, but this application right here actually lets you convert uh, a Nexus player, which is one of my personal favorite set-top box, uh, a Fire TV, which was my previous um, favorite one, a Fire TV stick. The only thing you kind of have to do is you kind of have to connect a mouse or something that can emulate a mouse. Like I have a Mealy F10 uh, Pro that can let you um, kind of use like mouse-like features just to get to some of these options, which you're not going to be able to if you just had a, uh, you know, just a Fire TV remote or a Nexus player remote or anything like that. Um, anyways, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go under settings, we're going to go under profiles, we're going to add profile, and then you can name this whatever you want. Uh, most people name it this, the, the name of the service that they're connecting it to. I'm just going to name it MAG250 uh, for simplicity's sake, since that's the emulator we're going to be, uh, I'm sorry, that's a receiver we're going to be emulating. Um, like any networking device, um, everything has its unique MAC address, and uh, these receivers are uh, are the same way as any other networking device. So they're gonna require uh, a unique MAC address. Now, the first six are, uh, are the 001A79. Uh, that Those numbers tell, um, well, determine the, the vendor. So anything that's a MAG250 is gonna start with those same numbers and slash letters. So you don't wanna change that. What you do wanna change is anything that had the zeros on it. So we're just gonna make up a number and since it's hexadecimal based, it should be 8 through H and 0 through 9. So anything within that range should be fine. And then we're going to put, let's put 1A. All right, there you go. Actually, let's switch that one to 3. And keep in mind, please don't copy the one I'm trying to do. You you do actually have to have a random number. Uh, so try to make it random. I'm going to let um, erase the last 5, and then I'm just going to make up a number. That's fine. Um, IP address, you can change this to be your private IP or your uh, your WAN IP. It doesn't really matter. I'll just choose 109. Okay. And then once you've actually paid for an IPTV uh, service, you're going to be given a, a an IP, a portal URL. So since I don't want to choose any of the private ones that I'm using, I'm just going to use one that's currently actually um, it's currently free. They actually don't have any authentication right now because they're trying to build up their service and they're trying to kind of get an idea how much um, load's going to be on these servers. So for right now, uh, please do not reply or post saying, hey, it's not working anymore. Yes, it's not supposed to be free forever. It's just going to be free for a while. So this is just something so I can quickly just show you how this works. So I'm going to hit back, back again, and then back again. And then I'm going to go to the very top. It's the little menu key. If you have the uh, Fire TV, you can hit the menu key on your remote to get the same menu. What I want to do is you're going to go to Profiles and you're going to switch it to 250. After you switch it to 250, you're going to go back into Settings and you should be able to switch the resolution. Here you go, the screen resolution. Um, you can set it to whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to choose TV sys, uh, System Res. If you don't do that option, you're going to see why uh, if you don't choose it because it's going to kind of like zoom in into a, like a corner and it's not going to show you the whole screen. So. Oh, and I'm sorry, and under here, go back into menu, go to media player, and you're going to choose external player. Um, I can't get the VLC uh, plug-in thing to work correctly. It just keeps crashing on some of the devices, so I've just kind of gotten into the habit of just using external and just using uh, an application like MX Player. So what's going to happen now is it should load, and you're actually going to be able to get right now 31 channels uh, for free. Not all of them are up 24-7 as they are doing their testing, but they're going to be receiving more channels. And keep in mind, I'm not going to click on any one of these because I don't want my video taken down uh, for any type of copyright. So once, you've, once I've shown you those channels, I'm just going to close it out. And we're just waiting for it to load. There you go. It's going to load right now. You're going to be able to see all channels, sports, English. Oh, you know what? Let me go to. There you go. Uh, in the very bottom, it was under media. It should have been under TV. So we're going to choose OK. And then in here, you're going to be able to see all the channels. Now, 
Um, the first time you run this, it's actually going to ask you what player you want to use, and it's going to give you if you have like Cody install, VLC, MX player, or any other type of player, it's going to ask you which one you want to use. Um, because I've already selected choose MX player, that's why it's choosing it right now. And as you can see right here, there's a couple of uh, channels in here. And actually, I'm just going to end it there. Uh, thank you for watching.